Welcome to the Legendary Set Review. In this episode, we're going to do the Dragon's Breath set. On Expertise, the set gives 29.5% attack, 27.5% defense, and 11 health, with an additional set bonus of 3 attack, 3 skill damage, and 5 health. For synchronization with what typical Archer playstyle is, this is really an awesome set, as most Archers can make great use of the extra attack and skill damage on their skill procs that are going off all the time. However, the lack of overall tanky stats leaves a little bit to be desired, and I would have loved to have seen one more health item. Although I am the first to admit that this bow with a defense base is a huge plus, because I feel most legendary weapons are too heavy in attack, and kind of feel lackluster and bland because of it. On the plus side of this, the attack fits most archers high risk and high reward playstyle, but it feels difficult to throw archers in defense because of this, because there's not a lot of tankiness. Overall, a good set, with Rune to be truly great, but a little more dog's breath than dragon's breath. Welcome to another Legendary Equipment Set Review. In this episode, we're going to go over the Eternal Empire set. On Expertise, we get 42% attack, 26% defense, and no health. With a bonus set giving 3% march speed, 3% uh, defense, and 5% more attack. This is definitely overkill. So many of these pieces are attack heavy that it feels like there's no real good appeal in their defensive abilities. Which is great offensively, but really concerning for a garrison set. Don't fret though, because... As the miscellaneous pieces, infantry have probably the best in the game. With two of the attack pieces being replaced with defense, it gives you some stability. But it still has a lack of any health items, which leaves a lot to be desired. Overall, I find the set to be a tad too offensive for my taste. No pun intended. Welcome to another Legendary Set Review. In this episode, we're going over the Wasteland set. On Expertise, we get 31% attack, 18.5% defense, and 18.5% health with an additional 3% health, 3% counterattack, and 5% defense. This is really one of the most balanced sets in the game. With solid misks to fill in some of the weaker pieces, you can create an insanely stat-dense build that is really tough to beat. The biggest knock on this set as a whole is the attack on the weapon, but that's really most of the legendary equipment to the game, so it's more him being average than being below average. Overall, I find this set hellish for your enemies. This is a Revival Set Review. The Revival Set is a very solid Archer set with a wide variety of bonuses and a very solid set bonus set. Overall, the set comes with a total of 15% attack and 18% defense, including the set bonuses on Expertise. So, in addition, you'll get an additional 30% on the base stats of these when you get them Expertise. This is especially no notable because you don't have to put additional materials in to get the expertise like you would with a legendary set. Making these very effective and honestly only replaceable with the legendary level set pieces. Overall, you'll see this set used a lot with field marches, whether that march is a Boudicca AoE march with YSG, or it is just a mobile march that happens to be archers. It's just overall great for archers and a great value for any player who's not running a rally or garrison. This is the Windswept set review. I honestly think the Windswept set is one of the best sets that is not a legendary set. And it really does have a lot of versatility. Its main stats are for cavalry and infantry, and this is where you're going to see it in 99% of the times. But the overall set bonus of additional march speed and the base march speed on each equipment piece makes it such a great utility to get 16% march speed on basically any march. The overall set gives 6.5% attack, 4.5% to 7% defense depending on if you're going with cavalry or infantry, and then 2.5% to 5% health with an additional 16% march speed. All this in an unexpertise set so you can get additional 30% value on all these stats. While it's not significant for the attack, defense, and health, that extra 30% is great for march speed. And so absolutely must have for anybody who's using like a super fast sound sound march to capture an arc for example so it has a lot of use here is what each epic combat accessory use is used for first delane's amulet is most often used for fighting tanks or general field fighting where counterattack damage becomes a factor this is especially early on when you're fighting something like a richard that has a lot of counterattack damage and although it would have an application to swarming, it just is not worth it to not have a legendary in that case, because you should not be swarming if you don't have the proper equipment. Next, for wind scars, it's great for mobile field presences, especially if you want to pair it with a windswept, it gives you an additional 8% to 
plus the 16% from the windswept set, plus expertise, it's just super useful. Silent Trial is good in general in general against skill-based marches or anything that really does most of their damage based on skill, and it's great in the field. Ancient Stratagems is a great generalist option just because extra troop capacity is useful, but you won't see a huge impact on the game. Finally, we've worked our way down to the boots. Here are the best boot pieces in Rise of Kingdoms. For infantry, it's hard to go wrong with Shio's Return. It was actually the first legendary equipment piece I built. It's got solid primary stats, decent secondary stats, it's easy to acquire and easy to expertise if you want to. So it makes a very nice valid choice for most players. Second, for cavalry we have the wasteland boots. And the primary stats are great, secondary stats are not that good. But the value is good, it's pretty easy to get a hold of. And aesthetically I really like them as well, so that's a nice little bonus. But objectively, they're better than pretty much every other option for cavalry. So it definitely gets the nod here. Lastly, for archers, we have the Dragon's Breath Boots. It's hard to go wrong with these. Solid defense, solid secondary stats if you want to have a mixed garrison. And just overall pretty easy to get a hold of. So definitely gets the nod, especially considering the secondaries are not that great. This is a review of the best chess pieces in Rites of Kingdoms. First, for infantry, we're going to look at the Hope Cloak. The Hope Cloak is really great stats, really good value, and it's really easy to get. And it's actually one of the first expertise legendaries I've ever had. So it's hard to argue with the potency of this item. And the lackluster infantry set bonus items give this item a nice little boost by a mile. And tack on the easy accessibility and you have even more reason to be excited. Second, for the calves, we have the wasteland chest. 11% health is awesome. And it's not really difficult to get while also being a straight upgrade versus any other equipment piece in this slot. So there's not much reason to build anything else. Looking at you, Shadow Legion. Last, for the archers, we have Milky Way. This is similar to the actual Dragon's Breath set piece, but the edge goes here for accessibility. But this and the archer set chest are essentially the same. Similar cost, almost the same stat amount, and this one's just a little bit easier to get, but it's definitely worth the pursuit. Here are the best equipment pieces in Rise of Kingdoms for gloves for each troop type. First, we have Sacred Grips for infantry. You could argue the Eternal Empire gloves are also good here, but Sacred Grips gets the nod because it's a little easier to get a hold of. And it gives slightly better stats, since you're not really chasing stat bonuses with the Eternal Empire set being somewhat lackluster. Overall, it's good value, great stats, and awesome option. For Cavalry, we have Navar's Control, which is one of my favorite pieces in the game. It's solid, easy to get, and I'm always a fan of health, so I can't ever complain about that. It's really the poster child for great miscellaneous equipment pieces. Lastly, for Archers, we have Ian's Choice. Of course, since the archers have the best weapon, they have to have meh options elsewhere. And that falls on the gloves mostly, because the budget kind of ran out when uh, you got to the butt of the crossbow, I suppose. But overall, it's solid. It's just attack is not that great a stat, but it's still better than all the alternatives. This is the best headpiece for each troop type. First, we're going to go over infantry, and our winner is the Eternal Empire Helm. There's not a lot of competition here, but it's still pretty solid. There's not a lot to complain about, but there's not a lot to get really excited about. It's solid stats, okay cost, decent overall value. Nothing to really write home about. Second, we have, for calves, the Wasteland set, which, again, is nice and solid, good value, and there's not really a lot of good alternative options. So this is definitely one that's worth the investment. Third, we're going to have a sleeper here, and I'm going to pick the Revival Helm for archers. Um, most of the archer helms are attack-based, and it's really kind of lackluster. So this gives a window for the Rival Helm to make its appearance and getting 7.5% health, which is almost 10.5% when you get expertise, is really close to the Legendary at a fraction of the cost. So it's definitely a good value here. These are the best leg pieces in Rise of Kingdoms. First, for infantry, you have to go with Eternal Knight. The stats, 12% defense, and then also good defensive stats for mixed troops are amazing. The acquirability of the blueprints is nice. I still have plenty of them sitting around after I've had two of these built and one of them expertised. And overall, it's just a great value. For cavalry, we have a similar thing, Ash of Dawn. Another poster child for really great value and a miscellaneous piece. Great health, great secondary stats for defenses, easy to acquire blueprints and easy to expertise. It's hard to complain about it. Third, for archers, we actually have the Fanatic's Tassets or the Revival Greaves. Honestly, when you look at the archer pieces, 
I don't really care for the Archer attack on the War God Cape or on the um, Dragon's Breath piece. So I usually go with these two pieces. You build uh, Revival Greaves if you already have a Revival piece, otherwise build Fanatics. Here are the best weapons for each troop type in Rise of Kingdoms. For really most of these, especially infantry, there's really not that many great stats. So the Shield of the Eternal Empire wins by default more or less because it's heavy on attack. It's got a high stat amount, but even the Epic for infantry is attack based. So there's not a lot to really give it competition. So it kind of gets the win by default. For cavalry, Heart of the Saint gets the nod because of 13% defense and a much more accessible blueprint and also much easier to expertise. So for you quickly expertise it and get about 17% defense, which is an insane amount of utility for most players. So it gets the nod here. And of course, for archers, we have the Dragon's Breath Bow, which is my favorite weapon in the game because it's just got so much defense. And then it's also got great secondary stats for anybody using mixed troops in a garrison. But overall, it's because the defense that wins the day for this piece of equipment. Here are the best Season of Conquest equipment pieces for each troop type. First, for Cavs, we have the Pride of the Khan. The defense boost is nice, and it's a better option than the attack. And you can still pick up any number of set bonuses based on the variety you get with the Cav sets. Second, for Infantry, we have Helm of the Conqueror. Similarly, the defense is nice versus the attack on the weapon. And you can still get the 2 out of 6 set bonus to give the extra defense. While it also gives you a good option for weapons, but this is just what I find is better. Lastly, for archers, I recommend the Hydra's Blast. The defense is hugely useful at 25%, it's a huge jump, and you can still get the 4 out of 6 skill damage boost set bonus from this without having to give up anything else outside of this. Welcome to another episode of Budget Builds. In this episode, we're going to be doing archers. First, we're going to start off our build with Golden Age for the 13% archer defense. Once we've built this, we're going to go to the Revival Helm for the 7.5% Archer Defense and follow it up with the Revival Plate to get the two-piece set bonus for the Revival set. Next, we're going to go to the Revival Gauntlets on the hand piece and complete the full set with the Revival Greaves on the leg pieces, giving a four set bonus and an additional 3% Troop Defense. Lastly, we're going to finish up with the Flame Treads to get yourself a nice little health bonus and set yourself at a total of 28% Defense, 12% Attack, and 5.5% health, all without having to expertise a single piece. You'll want to use this set on a semi-mobile damage dealing march, maybe one with some additional damage resistances like Boudicca Prime with her skill damage resistance, but overall it'll fit well with most Archer Field Commanders. Welcome to another episode of Budget Builds. In this episode, we're going to be going over Cavalry Builds. First, for the weapon, we're going to be doing Heart of the Saint. 13% defense is awesome, and it's easily one of the best weapons in the game. Next, for the helm, we're going to go with the Windswept War Helm. While the attack isn't as great, the move speed is super useful for the field. Next, for the chest piece, we're going to be building the Windswept Breastplate. That gives us the two-piece set bonus, as well as a nice boost to defense and march speed. Next, for the gloves, we're going to continue with the Windswept Bracers for the extra health and the extra march speed again. For the leg pieces, we're going to go with Gladiator for the 8% health bonus, and we'll finish up the set with the Windswept Boots. Overall, this set gives... 4.5% attack, 17.5% defense, and 13% health, alongside a 16% move speed bonus, all unexpertised. You'll want to put this on a mobile damage support like Joan Prime or William to get great results for low investment. Welcome to Budget Builds, where we build great field sets for low resource costs. For this episode, we're going to do infantry. First, we're going to start off with a weapon at Gatekeeper Shield with the amazing health bonus. Once we get to the helm, we're actually going to use the Windswept Helm for the infantry attack bonus and the march speed, which is useful for field. Next, for the chest piece, we're also going to go Windswept here for the defense and the march speed boost as well, giving us the two-set piece bonus. Once we go to the gloves, we're going to stick with the Windswept Bracers for the extra 2.5% health and march speed and complete the four-piece set on the boots later. Next, for legs, we're going to do Karak's ability for the extra 8% health. And as I said, we're going to be finishing up the Windswept Set 4 set for the extra 4% move speed on the Windswept Boots. Overall, this set provides you 21% health, 6.5% attack, 4.5% defense, and 16% march speed without any expertise, making an excellent option for field marches. 